Hi, I'm Joe Karras and these are my pace fishing edges. Okay, so bait for today's session. Pretty simple stuff, but we'll get onto the paste first. I'm gonna use the chocolate orange one-to-one, -one, as the name suggests, one part water to one part paste, and you'll get a lovely, lovely starting point. Might have to tweak it throughout the session, you know, add a bit more or add a bit more powder or whatever, but for a start, mixing it one-to-one -one is a great starting point. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a measured one pint of water, I'm just gonna shove it in this bowl. It's important to put the water in first and then the powder on top. The reason is it just ensures that you get a much more even mix and much more even finish. You don't get any lumps and stuff like that. So take the paste pot out. We need him for the uh, pole. And then we're going to measure out a pint of powder, paste powder. It's a chocolate orange one. It smells beautiful. Just like that. Nice and simple. And then get that in. Get all the uh, extras out there. And then just get your finger in and swirl it all around. And because you put the water in first, this is ever so easy to do. Look at that, you see. If I was to do it the other way around, I'd be mixing forever, but no need. And as you can see, it looks, well, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even pop that in, it's so wet. Look how, look how wet it is. But trust me, given a bit of time, half an hour or so, that'll absorb all that water and give you a lovely smooth paste to fish with. Like I say, I might have to tweak it as I go along, but as a starting point, that's great. Look at that. You wouldn't believe that would come around, but it will do. Now the second key ingredient for a good day's pace fishing, especially for the margins like we're going to target today, is ground bait. Now, again, I mix it backwards. Because I'm using it down the edge, I want it really saturated. I want it as wet as possible without it being a slop. I want it to go to the bottom and sit there. So what I do, I get a full three litre bowl of water, stick it in the bucket, and I'm going to get the whole bag of ground bait, stick it in, Fish are, hungry, are going to be hungry today. I'm going to get through a lot of ground bait and I'm just going to mix it together. So the same process as the paste. And just doing it like that, because I'm not bothered about it being over wet, I can just bosh it in and just leave it. And like I say, it'll give me, you can see it's absorbing all that water already, but I just find it's the easiest and quickest way. Look at that. It's just like a soup at the minute. But once again, that'll come around in no time whatsoever and give me that nice saturated edge ground bait that I want. And that is as quick as it needs to be for mixing up your edge ground bait. I can tackle up, I can set, get my rig set up, and when I come back to this and come back to my paste, they'll both be perfect. The only other bait I've got with me today is some hemp. Now I've done a lot of videos on paste fishing over the years and just good old hemp is, is a brilliant, brilliant feed. Don't bother with pellets, unless I'm fishing for little fish, don't bother with pellets. I think car carp are much more happy to feed over this on the bottom. It sticks to the bottom like glue. They'll grub around in it and then my nice little bit of paste will be on top of that and they just can't resist it. So nice big potfuls of this. I'll get through two or three tins in a session, but trust me, when it comes to feeding with paste, hemp is the, is the best. So that's as simple as it is. We've got our pot of paste, our ground bait, tub of hemp, and we'll go and catch a load of fish with these baits. Rig talk now, let's have a look at the three rigs that I've set up for this day's pace fishing. So I'm going to target a couple of little areas of the swim. First thing, I'm going to start on a top kit and one in front of me where it's about five foot deep. That's a great place to target on commercials. It's nice and close, so if I do miss a few bites, I can quickly rebate and get back in. And it's also close enough so that the fish don't want to naturally come up so much. If I was to fish maybe top kit and two, top kit and three sections, 
it's a bit deeper and the fish are more likely to want to come up. So keeping it nice and short, especially with the wind blowing at me like this, should be perfect. So the rig I've prepared for that is a paste number one float. And then I've just put two number eights directly below it and that is the only shot I've got on the line. I don't have anything down it whatsoever. It's just how I've always fished paste. I don't really see the need to have anything down. The hook bait anchors my rigging position nicely um, and it just allows me to read what's going on much better in my opinion. And it's just, if I want to go to a really soft, sloppy paste, I can do. If I was to have shot down here, it might pull the hook out of the paste. So it's about five foot deep. Like I said, I've got the number one paste float on there. Nice and simple. That is 020 AccuPower straight through to a size 10 XSH hook on there. Really simple, strong tackle. Now the other two rigs, the second area that I'm going to target are the margins. Now I've plumbed up two, both sides and they're a little bit different. The one to my left is really shallow and the one to my right is a lovely sort of 18 inches. Now I expect the one to my right to be better, however I can't resist the shallow water to my left. Now for the one to my right where it's a little bit deeper, you might have, if you followed any of my sort of fishing exploits, you might have heard me talk about fishing like really over depth when I'm pace fishing. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So what I've got, firstly, again, the rig, it's, like I say, it's about 18 inches deep and I've got a pace number one float. But if you see, that's a standard one. I've cut the bristle down, so the, uh, the stem, sorry. The, I've cut the stem down, so it's probably a third of the length what it, it is out the shop. And then I've chopped, a, chopped the eye off the top of the bristle and then I've got the nice long bristle there. The reason is I actually fish it with the float laid on the surface. So my rig is so far over depth that the actual weight of the paste doesn't cock the float and the float lays on the surface. And what happens is the fish come in, I don't see any of the liners or anything like that, but when I actually get a bite, the float will upright and shoot under. It's a fantastic way of catching fish in the edge on paste. It looks totally unconventional, but it works really well. And I've just got exactly the same, size 10 hook, 020 line, and then I've got a 15 Jura slip. Now the rig for my left hand edge where it's really shallow, again, super simple. And I've got a little Corum blob on there, just a small one, and it's probably, I don't know, a foot deep. And I can, again, I'm gonna fish out right over depth, and I'm gonna drag it right into the grasses, have the poly ball laid there, and because it's so small and dainty on the surface, the fish aren't gonna be spooked, and I can put a nice big piece of paste right in that shallow water and hopefully get some really explosive action at some point in the day. So that's it, three simple rigs that cover three different depths in my swim. Let's get some fish caught. Okay, so that's all the riggy bits and bait bits done. Let's get some bait in the swim and get some fishing done. So what I'm going to do on my um, top kit and one line, I'm just going to put in half a big pot of hemp. I'm just going to put a couple of sample bits of paste in there. I'm hoping to get off to a quick start there before moving into the margins. So what I'm going to do, it's important to sneak this bait in. You made a load of noise. The problem is with fisheries like this, there's a lot of fish in them and they're going to come off the bottom. So I'm just going to introduce, pick a firebank marker. I've got a lovely sort of bed of yellow irises over there that I can match up on, I'm just going to quietly put that in there. Nice. Then it's a case of feeding the edges. Now, in a match situation, I wouldn't feed this until probably an hour and a half of the match to go. But because we're here today doing this, I'm going to feed it straight away just to get us going. And I'm literally just going to put a full pot of ground bait down either edge. As you can see, that ground bait that I've fully saturated with water, Looks a bit stodgy and lumpy, but actually that is how you want it because it's nice and heavy. It'll just sit there on the bottom. So I'm just going to put one big pot on each side. I've got a hole in the bottom of my pot that I've just bored out with some scissors, a bit rough and ready. But that's really important because when you put the pot on the water and turn it over, the ground bit will just fall out in one lump rather than having to tap it and mess about with all the different bits. So I'm just going to pot that in again, nice and accurate. Take your time doing this. There's no rush. Nice and accurate, on my mark. You see that bait's released straight away. So put one that side to start with, and one on the other side. And trust me, when this bait, when this method gets going with this ground bait in the edge and this pace fishing, you can get through a lot of bait. So that's why we've done the whole bag of ground bait up. So on this right hand side, again, I've got a far back, like a marker with some reeds that are stuck up. I'm gonna feed everything there. Nice. Now let's get some bait on. Now let's show you how to hook the paste on and hopefully we can get some fish caught. 
Okay, so hooking the paste, it's really simple, but again, there's a few little key things to, to consider. Firstly is get a nice big bowl of water on your side tray. It's a messy game this is, but also having um, like your fingers glazed with water really helps getting the paste on the hook. So first thing to do, dip your hand in, get a wet hand, and then pick off a nice big blob of paste like that. You can see it's nice and wet, but it's not sticking to my fingers because I've got them wet fingers. Now, then I lay the hook on the, to the bottom of the paste like that. So it's right at the bottom and then I just sort of roughly form it, like so, and then dunk it in the water again and then slide it into the pot like that. And that's as easy as it is. It might sound funny, you know, if you never tried paste fishing before, that such a wet bait, but actually the way it is, it actually stays on really well. So let's get some in. So what I'm gonna have to lean forward ever so slightly on my mark, pop that in, and then hopefully, We'll get a bite pretty sharpish. There you go. That did not take long at all. So what happened there, we potted our hemp in, let it settle for a few minutes while I fed my margins and stuff, and I've just potted my piece of paste in. And as is often the case, you get one immediately. It happens so often when you're paste fishing. And it just sat there, Plenty of bristles stuck out, and it just absolutely levered under at a million miles an hour, which is the perfect sort of pace bite. Unmissable. And that's worth saying, a proper pace bite, you don't miss them. The bites you miss are their liners and false indications, but a proper pace bite, you just don't miss them. So it's all about learning how to read that bristle. And oftentimes in a match, you'll start off on that short pole, and this is what'll happen. You'll get a carp immediately. I've got 13 Jura slip on. So I'm expecting to catch a few F1s and stuff out there as well. So I didn't want to use too heavy elastic. Because really this is this line is more for ticking over until the margins come to life. So it feels a good fish though. Real good start. And in a match I'd be thrilled to uh, get one that quick. You now we've got strong tackle on as well, don't forget we've got O20 line on and Size 10 hook, so. It's a good one. I could do with heavier elastic on today if this is going to be the stamp of fish that we're going to be catching. It's like a proper pace fish to start with, that's for sure. Now, obviously, while I'm playing this, I'm thinking about my next fish. How am I going to feed the swim again? Now, because that fish came so quick, I can't imagine he's eating all that hemp. So I'm not actually going to feed again. I'm just going to go out with my hook bait and just see what happens. Last thing you want to do is feed too often because you're just going to bring fish off the bottom if you do that. So I much prefer to feed large amounts and almost fish the bait out and then feed and then go in. So because I caught that fish so quickly, oh, it's a real good one. Because I fish, caught that fish so quickly, I've got to assume that most of my bait's still there. So I'm not gonna feed again. It's a nice fish that to kick the day off. Perfect early pace fish, look at that. Cracking, hint of ghosty about him. And the perfect start, hook there perfectly. Sticking back. But that is like a dream start when you're pace fishing. And what we'll do, we'll show you now, we'll focus right in on the float and talk you through what indications to hit when you're pace fishing. Okay, so throughout all the pace fishing videos that I've done in the past and stuff, probably the number one question is, how do I hit the bites? Because it can be a bit of a nightmare. So I'm just gonna run you through and hopefully explain it. Now, disclaimer, you're not gonna hit every bite when pace fishing because you've got essentially a plummet on at all times and a tight line, you see a lot more of what's going on. So if a fish brushes past, you will get a positive bite because it's anchored to the bottom, if that makes sense. 
but it's it's learning what to strike at and what not to. You are going to miss a few bites, even the best paste anglers do, but it's all about minimising it and just showing a bit of patience. So what we do first, we pop the paste in, turn it over nice and quietly, and then lay my float on top. And then what will happen is, eventually the, the bait will go on the bottom and register on the float. See that? So register on the float there. And then what... It's all about now reading what's going on. Now there's a lot of F1s in this lake, so I am probably gonna get a lot of little taps and knocks and stuff. You see there straight away, it's lifted up uh, and I've not struck, because I don't think that was a bite. I just think it was an indication. Maybe that's had me paced off. Yeah. So we'll come back. Don't be disheartened because what you gotta remember is every time you miss a bite, you feed essentially feed in the swim because Every time I go out, you know, I'm, I'm putting a ball of ground bait in, essentially. So, don't be disheartened if you do miss a bite. What you're looking for, as a rule, is a, a really fast underbite. So, back in there. Eventually that paste will catch up and pull the float down. There you go, it's just touched bottom there. See that? So we didn't strike because it's slow. See that, it's just going, and it's gone under and it's stayed under and then I've struck. I've not struck at the first indication. I've waited and waited and waited. Made, almost made sure that the fish is on before worrying about striking. It feels like an F1. And when these F1s get involved, it can be a bit of a nightmare because they're so aggressive. But still, you know, that's a nice pound F1. That's very welcome on a, any day. Hopefully that just shows you that, you know, you've got to be patient when you pace fishing. You know, don't just strike at the first bite. If it's a proper bite, it will almost like stay under. So I'll just try and demonstrate that once more. Right, so what we'll do, we'll show you that again. So pop the bait in nice and accurately. It's on a slope, so try and pick on the same spot every time for consistency. And what will happen is the paste will settle on the bottom. And I can see there, it's on the bottom. I'm fishing slightly over depth, so I'm in touch with it, but I'm not, it's not so critical that everything will magnify on the float. So, see that? It's all about concentrating on what you're doing and showing a bit of patience. Oh, little indication there, though, it's gone right down to the black. Oh. See that, it's shot down and then popped back up. So the, that could have been a bite, that. But we'll show a bit of patience. Like I say, you are going to miss bites. It's unavoidable, I'm afraid. But just remember that every time you miss a bite, you fed the swim. So, it's, so that flow went under. I gave it a good few seconds before I struck. And we got another F1. So what I'm going to do is put some more bait in. Hey, look at that, crewy. Come on the crewy on the paste. Look at that. Lovely little fish. Now let's get some more bait in and see if we can catch a few more carp. Okay, so we've been fishing a little while now on this nice close in spot and it's actually been really good. I've caught probably five or six good carp and a few F1s and I've sort of settled into a little routine of how I'm doing it, like in terms of feeding, 
and presenting. So I'm not putting any loose feeding with my paste on. It just seems to, if I do that, I have tried it, fish come up and I miss a few bites. So as I mentioned before, what I'm doing, I'm putting a good amount of hemp in and then fishing it out. So as soon as I go in and don't get any indications, I'll feed again, but I'm happy to just tick over and keep it almost on the negative side rather than going too mad with the bait. So what I tend to be doing, I'm catching two carp and an F1 maybe, then I'm feeding again and, and just going through that. So I'm, but I'm getting lots of indications again now. I've just had a carp and they're obviously feeding well, so it floats just shot up there. And we're getting into a nice little routine. They're good carp as well, the sort of, I don't know, four to six pound fish that we've been catching. So you can soon do a good weight. And I think the decision to fish closer in rather than, you know, another, another section on, top kit and two, which is obviously a traditional sort of spot for people on commercials, but making a decision to come a bit closer in has meant fewer line bites, just fewer fish coming into the peg. It just makes it a bit easier to control. But what, like I say, I'm itching to get in these margins because there's fish sort of turned up in the edges already. So I think we're gonna have a good day and I really want to show you that sort of over depth setup. So we'll try and catch one more on this and then we'll get in the edges. So no indications this time. Oh, there we go. Little, little knock. So I can't stress enough how important it is to just be patient when you get an indication. The temptation is to strike at everything, like if you were pellet fishing or maggot fishing or whatever, but pace, you just need to be patient and actually read the bristle. See my bait's off there, so we'll come back in. You normally get about a minute, I'd say, before your bait's sort of off, but it's not a problem because you like, you know, I hate to sound like a broken record, but every time you miss a bite or don't get one, you fed your swim for the next chuck, so pop that in there. And the wind's sort of coming at me in a, diag a diagonal, sort of left to right, back that way. So I'm holding my pole to the left of my float and it's sort of dragging in, but it's nice because it keeps me perfectly in contact with my paste and I'm keeping it nice and still over the spot. If I was to hold my pole to the right of the float, it'd just drag through unnaturally. So just putting it upwind is perfect. So a little indication then. But the fish are obviously feeding well today. There's plenty of fish feeding and you do some damage today on this paste. You get through three or four tins of hemp today, no problem, because they're definitely responding to it. Nice and patient. We're getting indications there. Just seeing one with its tail out down the edge, so I'm absolutely itching to get down there. Oh, there we go. Little F1. You see that the float was doing all this and lifting up and that, but I waited and it went under, counted to two or three and then struck and then nice little fish on. Nice little F1 just to finish that. But I'm absolutely itching. What I've seen down the edge, nice little F1. I'm absolutely itching to get in the edge. So let's pop him back. Let's have some electric edge action. Okay, so we've had a brilliant start on that top kit and one line. We've caught a load of fish there. But it's time now, it's a bit later in the day, just feels right to get in the edge now. I'm seeing an odd fish mooching around, should be good. So I'm gonna start on the right hand side where it's a little bit deeper. Let's see if we can uh, catch a few big ones to finish the day off on. Now the first change is I'm putting a much bigger piece of paste on. I want a nice big target bait. So then fish can home in and hopefully pick out those better fish as well. So what we've got to do, we're feeding it with big pots of ground bait, regular. Really trying to rev the fish up, get them interested in feeding. Like I say, this side's about 18 inches deep. I'm just accurately potting them in. Put the odd bit of hemp in every now and again as well, just as a change. But the key is that, oh, I missed it. That was a nice indication, but that's a good sign. At least there's a fish there. And what we're doing, like I say, we're fishing well over depth. So we're looking, the float's gonna sit on a slight angle. The float's gonna sit on a slight angle just to allow me to try and distinguish the liners. Cause you do, when you're dealing with big fish in the edge like this with paste, 
you get obviously get a lot of liners. Right, so that's what we was looking for. The float's just sat there, it's gone a couple of twitches, stood up, belted under, big carp's come out the edge. And that is exactly what we're looking for. And it tends to be when, you know, if you do miss a few bites in the edge and stuff, it's a good fish. If um, you are missing a few bites in the edge, it tends to be, especially at this venue, like F1s and stuff. So you just gotta, you know, get your head down a bit. Don't worry about it too much. Odd must bite, never hurt anyone. Just got that 15 Jura slip. Hopefully control these nice fish, they're good then. Real edge dweller. Perfect start to this. And this is where you can really do your damage late in the match. You know, I've had it numerous times here where I've caught 60, 70 pound in the last hour down the edge doing this. And obviously when 120, 130 pound wins the matches, obviously 60, 70 pound in the last hour is massive. And because I'm fishing paste, strong tackle, it does tend to sort out the better fish when they're on it. There you go, that's the perfect start to our edge sort of session. Lovely mirror. Just hold him up carefully. Calm down. That lovely fish to start. Okay, so we just had that real nice fish down the right hand edge, a few F1s, but I'm itching to get in the shallow water down the left. So, got my little poly ball set up here for that shallow water, and I've just been feeding it, every, you know, every now and again with a nice big pot full of ground bait. Now it's a case of getting in there and nailing one. So, again, real big lump of paste. Dip it in, fill the pot up with it, and then we'll get it in there. So I'm fishing, there's a little hole in the bank here where I can get into shallow water. And what I'm trying to do is just get it right up in that shallow water, get the poly ball on top of it, and then we're sort of waiting for a big carp to come in. You often see an odd one coming in, big tails and stuff. And the beauty of this poly ball is there's nothing in the water to spook them, so they feed with so much confidence. There we go, it didn't take long. Nice big explosive bite. And he's boring off and you'll soon see the difference how, you know, we fished down that right hand side, it's probably a little bit too deep, missing an odd bite. And yet you come down this left where the depth's just right. It's not too shallow, it's still probably 15 inches deep. But the difference is I can go in there, sit there without getting any liners or anything, and then just get a big clean bite out of the blue. Uh, it should be a good fish as well. 
Just take your time with them, there's no rush. Got a strong tackle on, so. But that was exactly what I wanted to see. Just go in there and get a bite super quick. Nice big common look. Look at that. Great start to the shallow water. I don't know, six pounds, seven pounds, something like that. Perfect start for the uh, shallow water. Now I can see there's fish there again already, so no need to add any, any more food just yet. Just keep an eye on it when you're netting the fish and dealing with the fish. And I've just, all the way through while I've been playing that, I've been keeping an eye on it and there's fish coming in, so I don't need to put any more bait in. The last thing you want to do is get it going too mental down there so nice big pot of paste again and we'll get in there but as soon as the fish as soon as I don't think there's any fish coming in then I'll put another big pot full of ground bait in and this is why you need that full two kilos because you're gonna get through it it's amazing how quickly you get through it when as soon as they turn up and they're feeding like they are today then you're just gonna get spells where you just got to keep the bait going in there you go Another one, as quick as that. And this is where you can make them such a big difference in your matches. Because all of a sudden, every fish is massive and it's as quick as you can get in there, really. It's another big one, big common. This 15 elastic just deals with them without being too, without being too much. Getting me wet this one. Look at that. Too big for me landing there. Beast. This is a double figure carp in anybody's money. And that is, that's it, probably close to 18 pound in what? Not even five minutes? And that is how you can do your big damage in these matches, look at that. Absolute bruiser. So, just notice there's no fish coming in this time, so I'm gonna chance it and put a pot of bait in, so. But as you can see, I'm always looking, I'm, I'd rather err on the side of caution, but there's nothing coming in, so I'm just going to put in half a pot, that lovely wetted ground bait. And I'm looking, even when I'm filling my pot up, because the last thing I want to do is ruin it by putting too much bait in. So, pop that in and get straight on it. Keep an eye on it. And this is just like when it can be unbelievably deadly, this paste in the edge. Lovely big bit. Right, so the trap's set. And obviously the depth is dead right because we've not missed a bite yet down here. It's just been going, sit there, no liners or anything, just it just absolutely wallops under. So you, you know you're in the right spot. Down that other side, it was obviously just a little bit too deep for them. And as, you know, it's as nice as it is to catch the F1s and stuff. You know, there's so many of them in this lake that there can be a bit of a problem. If it's a little bit too deep, they can be all over your pace and knock it off before you even get a chance for the carp to come in. Whereas if you get up in the shallow water, them F1s don't like it so much. And you can sort of sit and be a bit more patient for those big units. So we'll just try and catch a couple more and then we'll be done.
So there we go. Final fish of the session. Nailed on the polyball rig and what a fish. An absolute bruiser of a pace fish and that is what this method is all about. Beautiful ghosty. I'm gonna say he is king of the pond. Let's have a look. And the perfect pace fish to end on. Be careful with it, we don't want to hurt it because that is an absolute beast, especially for this lake. Look at that. What a fish. What a fish to end on. Get on the paste, everyone. And you too will be catching loads of monsters like this.